I must start by saying that the title for this session in the Mahatma's footsteps is not uh, my title. I am not walking in his footsteps. It would be very presumptuous on my part to suggest that or to even think that. I don't know in whose footsteps I am walking, but I am a very unlikely candidate for the description of in the Mahatma's footsteps. I see we have a very small gathering here today. I say small gathering because the number of empty seats is in excess of the number of filled seats. And that gives me a certain amount of satisfaction also for the reason that those who have not come, though they were expected to come, are doing something very valuable with their time, are doing something other than listening to an old man wanting to share his perhaps very outdated thoughts with them. But I have a strict time limit. Though we are starting about 50 minutes late, I will stick to my time limit, which is 25 minutes, of which three are already done. All of us are subject to fear. I had imagined there will be about 200 students facing me and I will ask them, how many of you are completely free of fear? But since I do not have that gathering in front of me, I will not ask that question. I will just say that since I know myself, I know that we are all prisoners of some form of fear or another. On the 1st of January of 1948, which was the last 1st of January in his life, in the month of January, which was to be the last January in his life, Gandhi writes, on 1 January, a Thai visitor, visitor from Thailand, complimented me on India's independence. Today, I said, not everyone can move about freely in the capital. Indian fears his brother Indian. Is this independence? He was 79. I want to go back to his childhood when he says about fear. I used to be in constant fear of thieves, gnomes and creepy crawlies. The phobia had me in its complete grip. Going anywhere alone after nightfall was out of the question. I imagine ghosts emerging from one direction, thieves from another, snakes from a third. A lamp burned in my room through the night. He had a housekeeping nurse called Rambha, who was charged to look after him by his parents. Rambha saw my fear and suggested as a remedy for this fear the repetition of Rama Nama. This was when he was a child. So I had gone from his last January when he said there is fear in the Indian capital. Indian fears Indian. I took all of us back to his childhood when he was extremely afraid of creepy crawlies. 
and Rambha told him as a remedy for this fear you should repeat Ramanama. I want to now say in the remaining 15 minutes of my time that perhaps unlike most of us he encountered physical assaults. By assault, I mean assault, not threat, but actual assault. The first of which was when he was in South Africa fighting for the rights of Indians and a group of white South African youth thought he was going to import large numbers of Indians. And he had come in a ship on, from a visit to India. And he was told, don't get from the ship. These youths seem to be ready to assault you, but he ignored that advice. A mob followed us. With every step we took, it became larger and larger. A man of powerful build caught hold of Mr. Lawton, who was accompanying him, and tore him from me. Then they pelted me with stones, brick bats, and rotten eggs. Someone snatched away my turban, whilst others began to batter and kick me. A burly fellow came up to me, slapped me in the face, and then kicked me. I was about to fall down unconscious when I held on the railings of a house nearby. But I remember well that even then my heart did not arraign my assailants. In the same country, South Africa, when he was recommending that Indians should give their fingerprints voluntarily after having told them that you should not give your fingerprints. When he said you should give your fingerprints voluntarily, there was a Pathan called Mir Alam who was very angry with him. So on the way to the registration office where Gandhi was going to give his fingerprints, Mir Alam followed him. I did feel there would be an attack on me. Not more than three minutes walk from the registration office, I became surer. Mir Alam accosted me and asked, where are you going? I said I proposed to take out a certificate of registration giving the ten fingerprints. If you will go with me, I will first get you a certificate with an impression of only two thumbs and I will then take mine. I had scarcely finished the last sentence when a heavy cudgel blow descended on my head from behind. I do not remember the manner of the assault, but people say I fell down unconscious with the first blow which was delivered with a stick and they also kicked me. Thinking me dead, they stopped. I have an impression that as the blows started, I uttered the words, He Rama. This was in South Africa when he was a young man. So He Rama was there with him as Rambha had recommended to him in his second experience of a physical assault. I want to now come to the conclusion of what I'm going to say for I should be mindful of time and say that towards the end of his life, in the last month when he had said Indian fears his brother Indian, on the 20th of January, today is what, 24? We are very near the anniversary of this episode. On the 20th of January, a non-lethal bomb exploded 
at the prayer meeting site in Delhi when he was holding a prayer. Now he is 79. I asked the congregation to maintain calm. All India Radio has recorded it. Recordings are very, very vital. All India Radio was recording all his prayer meetings and it has recorded this. He is talking in Hindi and then this bomb goes off. And he says, Kuch nahi hua hai, kuch nahi hua hai, sach much mein kuch ho jai, to kya karoge? If something really happened, what will you do? Be calm. And then I asked Manu to start singing Ram Dhun. We have a great musician with us today, Anil Srinivasan. He will understand this. He said, Kuch nahi hua hai. The bomb has just gone off. Manu, tum gao. And she started singing. And it's all recorded. You can get it on YouTube. Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram. Then the great line, Ishwara Allah Tere Nam. Then Gandhi writes, I heard that the man behind the explosion had been arrested. An illiterate woman had displayed courage in having the man arrested. I admired her courage. But then I said the next day, those who are behind him and whose tool he is should know that this sort of thing will not save Hinduism. He had been assaulted and almost killed by white Christians in South Africa. He had been assaulted and almost killed by a Pathan called Mir Alam in South Africa. This bomb had been exploded 20 days before. Sorry, on the 20th of January, 10 days before. He met his assassin. I say he met his assassin, for there is no doubt that when he saw his assassin, he recognized him from an earlier encounter. The assassin had nudged Manu, whose rosary had fallen on the ground, and she had stooped to pick it up. When there was nothing between him and the assassin, except the name of Rama. He met his end with the magic that Rambha had told him, never be afraid, say Rama, Rama, Rama. And those are the two names that passed with his last breath. And All India Radio shortly thereafter, and I again say this with Anil Srinivasan in my mind, All India Radio played Hari Tumaharo, Hari Tumaharo, Jana Ki Bheer, Hari, rid the people of our country from fear.